You're listening to The Metal Experience. Only on Slam Internet Radio. And we just heard... My mic is... And we just heard... Uh, Diecast Internal Revolution. I looked up as Revolution. I originally had on Evolution. <laughs> uh, Soil, Breaking Me Down, and Pantera Good Friends, and a bottle of pills. We're here with Orion 9. Hey. Woo! How you guys doing? Hey, doing? Yay. Yeah. We're all here, and you guys didn't get arrested. No. 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 <laughs> we had a little bit of a, of a scare five minutes ago where the band was crossing the street and the cops pulled up. From? Tell them. From where? Dollar from Tree. What? Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree. Yes. Where, actually, Gibby was buying an iced tea, and then he grabbed it, and he bought it, and then he found out it was already opened. Yeah. Which is kind of weird. So did you still buy it? No. Uh, no. Oh, no. Well, trade well, definitely that not. Trade we don't it. want him dying. But now these other kids are getting arrested. And that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, Orion 9, you guys have actually been around for a while now. Forever. How long, how long has it been? Over a decade. It's 12 years. About 11. This will be my 12th year, I think. Your 12th year? Yeah. I started in the band when I was 17 or 18. You old son I was going to say, because I heard about you guys back when I was probably Seven. high school sometime. Yes. At 29, I am a veteran. I'm done. I quit. So why don't we go around and introduce ourselves to the world? Oh, no. Who's here and who's missing? Uh, okay. You are? <laughs> yeah. I'm just looking at him looking at that, and then I realize it's radio, so looking at stuff doesn't really play out. Um, so, yeah, I'm Frank. I'm the singer from Ryan 9. Uh, I also go by Rick from the Rick and Gibby show. Uh, Carl. Okay, so how do you get Frank and Rick? That's a long story. All right, we'll get into that. Yeah. <laughs> That's one, of them, that's one of them tour stories. All right, so yeah. continue for uh, who else Car- is here. Carl, Carl Redmond's not here, the guitarist. Uh, Tim, was it Depur? 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 You don't even know his your bandmate's name? He just got in the band like six months ago. Yeah. And you still don't know his <laughs> name? <laughs> 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 it's half a year, come on. I don't even answer his phone calls. Like, <laughs> nice. you got to earn that. Yeah, this you is the new guy. I don't need him. Yeah. He's been here six months. All right, so. Uh, I'm Damon. I'm the bass player of God. Year and a half. Okay, year and a half. He's kind of new too. Do you answer his phone calls? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. He's gotten to that point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, Kip Keebles isn't here. Special K. Special K. Yeah. I like that nickname. He's a lunch mom at his kid's school. <laughs> <It's> awesome. <laughs> awesome. He's got like nice. piercings. Oh He's my all, god! And the tattoos and yeah. the that's yeah. funny. The whole nine yards. Yeah. yeah. And that's Gibby. You want to introduce yourself, Gibby? I'm Gibby. I'm Gibby. Jack of all trades, master of none. Uh, <laughs> Do whatever most of the band stuff doesn't want to do. So you're the bitch? No. Uh, <laughs> no. Jeez. No. No. That's Gibby, man. Not since last week. Yeah. No, we actually have a prospect for that. Yeah. Eric's our new prospect, man. All right. So you guys have been together for 12 years? Well, me and Carl have. Carl's not here. But me and Carl technically have. I mean, he's kind of new and Kip's new. Tim's really new. So how, d- how did this band form, and how have you guys managed to stay together for 12 years? We're going to do this, huh? <laughs> we're going to do <laughs> this. I mean, do this. it's we're a two-hour go interview. I mean, i got to talk about something. <laughs> I, th- I, was, I thought it was like an infomercial we got to do. No. Um, okay, well, basically, we were in, um, <clears throat> uh, me and Carl Redman were in high school, and uh, he was like a year or two younger than me, and uh, we just started jamming together with this drummer, and we found another dude through an ad, and, you know, he just kind of... They're playing charades. I can see that. I know, like, <laughs> First yeah. syllable, yeah. third word. That stuff's going to be so gnarly, dude. Rip yeah. it from the dollar Rip tree. Rip it. A dollar Whoa. store, five-hour energy. Nice. <laughs> just like sit, shaking jello. <laughs> okay, so oh, continue your syrupy. high school story. Oh, yeah. So anyway, so we started jamming. And then um, really what happened was we got this practice space in Bensonville. And uh, Scott Davidson at the time of Rebel Radio was practicing, like, right next door. Cheers that shit. And uh, he started hearing us. And so he's like, oh, I'll manage you guys. So he just kind of took us under his wing, got us a bunch of shows, and got us hooked up with a bunch of national shows and, like, tours and stuff. And it just Did you guys cool. open Gigant Tour back in 2005? Yes. Okay, so I did see you guys back then. Yeah, I've done a lot of weird shows and things, and it, it's been cool. It's been up and down. You know, it's hard. The music industry is, like, a mistress, and... Sucks. So that's what it feels like to them. <laughs> yeah, I guess. No. Oh, no. And you've had some lineup changes. Yeah. So how did yeah. uh, <laughs> how did this guy right here become part of your band? I don't know. How'd you join the band? <laughs> I filled in for five shows and I yeah. never left. He we took two. Yeah, we had out of state shows and we had, we needed a fill in, and he was in another band. So yeah. we're just like, hey, you want to come and fill you know fill in? It's cool. Like you don't have to play with us forever, kind of thing. 
we went out of town and he just partied with us and he was like this is awesome and kind of never right. left yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like dude can you go home it's like nah, i guess nah, i'll just yeah. stay in the band and how'd you end up getting tim well tim was in bloodstream parade Oh, bloodstream parade. yeah. bloodstream parade's over with, right? Yes, yeah. yeah. And sadly, Tim Tim was like kind of coming out to our shows, and like he'd come to our after parties, and we'd get all messed up together and stuff, and like it was cool. And then like we needed a we needed a guy, and we tried out a few people, and he was one of them, and it just kind of worked out. And he's cool. His hair is crazy. <laughs> so Orion Nine, how did you end up getting that name? <laughs> so originally. Like, the band was actually called Kill Switch, and this is before Kill Switch Engage was, like, in existence. And, uh, because this was, like, 2000. And so then all of a sudden, like, they came out, and we're like, oh, that sucks. Like, we gotta change the name. So, really, what I did is I walked around my high school and marketed different names. And I was like, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? What do you think of this? And, uh, yeah, I don't know, Ryan Nine just kind of stuck with that. You know, that's the honest answer. I mean, it wasn't. Doesn't mean anything, honestly. It, it does now, I guess, but it didn't then. What does it mean now? <laughs> well, it just means like you gotta go to band practice, and that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> you go to shows, and you're probably gonna throw up into Denny's, and that sucks. And you know, it means all those things, and that's cool though. Or a volunteer fire department. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sorry to the Laporte volunteer fire department. <laughs> uh, that did not mean to vomit in the parking lot. What happened? Why? Um, it, <laughs> Kip's wife packed these like old Twizzlers, and I knew they were something was wrong with them, but I kept eating them. Ew. And like I drank a bunch of water because I was kind of drunk, and then I was like, "Pull over!" And I just let it all go <laughs> in the Laporte Volunteer Fire Department. Nice. Fire awesome. The old kind of. Twizzler puke. It was it was smooth, surprisingly. No burn, no nothing. No chunk. Nothing up the nose. Well, just little chunks, like rabbit pellet chunks. Just bloop, 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 bloop. <laughs> it was gnarly, dude. I felt really bad about that because I'm like, man, these people were volunteering their time. In the town of Laporte, first off, which is just like meth heads, and like you know, these are like the they the, probably thought you were a meth head. Yeah, right. And they're like this guy's like, no, jumping out of. No, it's just the Twizzlers. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's another meth head throwing up yeah. on our fucking driveway. Interesting enough, I, I bought drugs from a stranger out there, which I normally don't do. <laughs> but something about Laporte, Indiana, said, you know what? Do it. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Laporte. Taste our way. Nice. And I did. It was nice. The guy's nice. name was Tuna. See, you know it's gonna be good when. Nice. Hey, what's up, man? I'm Frank. Hi, they call me Tuna. Okay, all right, I'm listening. What do you got? <laughs> <laughs> well, you just met this guy on the street? No, he was in the bar. Oh. He bought me a shot, you know, customary thing. Oh, my God. Look, either, you, wait, we're on the internet, right? Yeah. So I can You can say anything. Okay, so either, like, <laughs> he's going to sell me drugs, or, like, I'm going to have to give him a hand job. But I went to his car, <laughs> and, like. <laughs> you gave him a hand job. <laughs> dude, this guy, so I went to his car <laughs> and I gave him a hand job. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, <laughs> after we were done, I was using the PRL and stuff, and then, like, he opens this big <laughs> container. And it's just all this stuff, and I'm like, all right, cool, dude. It was awesome, so it was really good. You know, I blinked out a lot of it, but from what I remember, I had a hell of a time out in the port. So nice. And that was just like what, like a month ago, we were out there. Yeah, something like that. I yeah. thought this was a story from like oh yeah, four. Like, no, 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 like a no, month ago. That was a month ago. We were out in the port. Keep Tuna's keeping it real still. <laughs> Shout out to Tuna. Thanks for the job. <laughs> Tuna. Yeah. Tuna, you know who you are. You know what's weird? He was a longshore fisherman. Man named Tuna, go figure. Nice. That's, That's probably story. why they call him Tuna. Maybe. I think it's because of his cock. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways. Which you have first hand knowledge. <laughs> All right. So being a band for twelve years again, yeah. what are some of the things that you have learned over that period of time? Uh good or bad? Don't you, take two. Yeah, don't ever take two of anything on the road. <laughs> nice. He learned that the hard way. L like um, what? <laughs> Just don't take two. Yeah. Just don't take two. Of anything. No matter what they offer you, whatever they do, do not take two. Um, also, uh, let's see what else. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, metal music is, like, way too serious. And the people that play it generally take it way too seriously. Like, Jesus, this guy in these shorts. Like, What's <laughs> up, bro? Dude, that, <laughs> that guy was, was cool. Yeah, <laughs> waving to us in the fishbowl. What's up, bro? <laughs> that guy was badass. For every, all the listeners at home, the guy with uh, short shorts, jogging short shorts, just... Uh, Said hello. You look like a buff Mark Anthony, for those of you who know who that <laughs> is. He was pretty cool. All right, so continue. Uh, yeah. Um, I don't know. what. Oh, yeah, music industry. Um, I don't know. It sucks. You know, nobody cares anymore, really, to be honest with you. The few that do, though, it's cool. Like, And I think there's people that like, kind of starting to get back into it. But, like, you know, like when we started, like the Internet thing was just kind of starting to blow up. So, like, there was a huge scene. And then that kind of went away. But it's weird because, like, if you, if you travel – and like go to like places like Quincy 
uh, in Muscatine, Iowa, and, and you know, weird off the wall places. There's huge scenes there still. I mean, these kids are craving for things. They don't have smartphones. You know, like you tell them, like, oh, dude, like, look us up on Facebook. This kid, I swear to God, we went to his house after a show. He's like, oh, come party. How long ago is this? This was, uh, what, uh, Quincy, about a year ago. We were in yeah, Quincy. About a year ago. Yeah, that's, that's third show. yeah, we were in Quincy a year ago. We go to this kid's house. We're partying out, and he's got a c- computer, and he's playing music. I was like, dude, pull up Facebook. Like, I want to show you our shit. He's like, oh, no, yeah, this, this is only for music, man. Like, and, and, like, they didn't have smartphones. You know, like, like, oh, we have a free app. Plug, plug. We have a free app. And we're like, you know, go, go to, you know, the Google Play Store, download it. He's like, we don't have those phones. And it's weird, but, like, they have radio, and they actually listen to the radio. And so it's cool. Like, it used to be about, like, getting to the city and playing in the city. Now it's like, dude, no, like, what's the most far, obscure, weird place? Because you're going to go there, and there's going to be, like, 500 kids. And Usually the, the city shows, more of the city shows we go to don't have uh, that big of a turnout. For they, local bands? They don't. They, they used to. On, like, the local. They used to, yeah. Because yeah. I remember being real young and, like, sneaking into shows and being like, wow, this is, this is, this is cool. Like, there's a lot of people. You, you guys know? have an app? Yes. Called what? Orion 9. 9. Are you on Does the it come up on a droid? Yes, that would be the Google Play Store. And if you it doesn't come up, let us know. You app? Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm not finding it. What is it called? Ass. I mean, this is my 13 results that came up. Yeah, what the hell? It's on mine. I downloaded it. All right, while we figure that out, because I want the Orion 9 app. Yeah. I Damon's our IT it. guy, so. Well. Don't, you like, don't you, like, moonlight around here, Damon, or something? You, like, work around here or something? Oh, wait, it's under music? Maybe. Are we okay, there? so, I mean, you're under music. Well, that's our album. Okay. Our old album. Well, I'm only getting songs, not an app. Well, well let's spend some more time on apps. <laughs> Like for the people at home, pull out your phones. Let's play along. And search Orion 9 and try to download their awesome app. If you can find How it. did you end up creating an app anyway? I mean, how do you do that? It's real easy, really, actually. You just go to Reverb Nation and do it. Interesting. Yeah. Anyone really? could have one. You could have one. I could have one. I do have one. I'm going to have two. I want to have one now. It's easy. We what, should have one for our app? show. It's Wait. beautiful. Ooh. Boom. Interesting. Hey, coming soon, Metal Experience app. Look for it sometime this week. Hey, I'll create yeah. it. Whoa, Jesus throwing Christ. things in it's garbage. Eight. So you guys have had some some time room. to <laughs> meet yeah, people and it gets it's real okay. hot. I'll get it. Real um, hot and sexy. What are some of the interesting places that you've been and some of the awesome people that you've been able to share the stage with? Uh, Vinnie Paul. By really? Far. Yeah, yeah. I, we got to open for Hell Yeah back in like '07 for some shows, and it was like I think I remember. It was like that. boner, dude. Just the whole thing was like, oh, oh yeah. I mean, you got like. <laughs> Half of Mudvayne walking around and, like, Vinnie Paul and his whole crew. You're just like, oh, my God, this is insane. And, like, it was really cool because we got to play um, um, Chicago, which was cool, you know, playing home, which is cool. Uh, Peoria was really badass because that's, like, Chad's whole area. Uh, Vegas, sick. I mean, the stories You played Vegas. Vegas with Hell Yeah? Yeah, at the House of Blues. It was amazing. Whoa. Nice. Yeah, there's some stories there. Well, let's talk about it. <sighs> let's get dishy. <laughs> well, most of them end with women crying. Um, what? <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, yeah. It was cool though because at the time, um, the drummer in OTEP was uh, this dude Brian, and uh, Brian used to play in Dominion. For anyone out there who remembers them, they they were from like Aurora area, and we played with them for years, like when we first started at Riley's Rock House, like constantly. And uh, so it turned out he was in that band, so it was really cool. So like we're in Vegas, we're partying out the Hard Rock with everybody, and some Vinnie Paul wig out on this chick. She doubled down, and he flipped. He's like, bitch, I told you not to double down. What the fuck's your problem? We're all just like, oh, no, it's Vinnie Paul. What's what? he, he's going to hit her. What the fuck? What's double down? Nah, don't worry about it. Just don't do it, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so. I'm like, what? <laughs> okay. Urban Dictionary. It. Yeah. Okay. You know, not now. Okay. <laughs> Dio. Met Dio. Met Dio. I mean, I, I honestly, like, you meet all those people through the years. As you play shows, you go places, it's like... It's cool, you know, like, it's cool to meet them and stuff, and things surprise you, like, how tall they really are. Dio is, like, three foot seven. Yeah, yeah. he's, like, really short, dude. Like was really short. three foot seven. Right, well, yeah. Jeez. Oh, he's dead. <laughs> and you being in the band for, like, a year and a half now, what are some of your highlights? He's gotten, like, dicked. Don't, don't Yeah, I really kind of got screwed on this one. A die cast. Well, die cast was cool. cool. Egypt Central. Egypt Central. Burn Halo, they were Burn weird. They'd make up. You met you, you got to play with Burn Halo. Yeah. I love Burn Halo. Yeah, that was a good Egypt time. Central is pretty cool too. Luca hates. <laughs> I don't know who they are. Yes, you do. Don't worry about it, bro. Kick ass. You hate that song. Oh, that song blows. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was actually funny because the uh, bass player from Egypt Central went to Wheaton North. 
Really? And was best friends with my stepbrother. Wow. And that my is stepbrother a talked to me about it like very three small years world. <laughs> and, he, and we're talking, he's like, yeah, you know, I was waiting. I'm like, you know, my stepbrother. He's like, oh, yeah, dude, he was like my best friend in high school. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. So that was kind of cool. Um, I think Diecast probably was one of Those the Those dudes are really bands. cool. Yeah. I think it was one of the better bands that we ran with. So we did all three shows that they had out here. Um, were you with us when we played with Flaw about it for? No, I think that was like just. No. Uh, yeah. Okay. They yeah, had they had one what one CD. Yeah. Like well, I accidentally bought it, thinking it was Mudvayne, and it sucks. It and was, then I gave it to the C Exchange. I'll say place. this. I'll say this. The drummer live was actually badass. The maj- the rest of it was just horrendous. The drummer was cool though. Whatever his name was, he was badass. I don't remember what they sound like, but I remember like Mudvayne buying their CD and being like, oh. Damn it. This is um, terrible. They sound like 2004. That's about it. it. Sounds about right. New metal. How many CDs have you guys actually put out in this period of time? Hmm. Full length CDs, what? like two. But like a million and one, like three song, four song, seven songs. Like so how many songs do you think you have? 28 minutes worth. <laughs> <laughs> Close. Hold on. To be fair, that's 12 our years, twice. 28 minutes. <sighs> reflective um no like i don't know maybe like 25 30 tunes that we actually stuck with through the years i mean because the problem is you like you write some songs you put them out and you kind of go around you play those tracks and if people like them you keep playing them and then you add a new one here a new one there but you know they kind of you know we play out a lot and we used to play out a shit ton so like there wasn't a lot of writing time it was just go out get drunk play after party that was about it for many years are you guys yeah. recording something now? Well, we just wrapped up recording um, six, seven new tracks. And uh, I think in, like, end of October, we're going to go and do, like, another three. Because here's the thing, like, there's no point in doing a CD anymore. It's pointless. Like, why, why do you do a CD? There kind of isn't. Do you, do you buy a CD? I'm sorry. Like, I've never, I haven't bought a CD since I was, I don't know, high school, maybe. I like, I don't buying know. CDs. I just have Morgan illegally download all the music Thank you. I want now. Right. So, like, and even if you don't illegally do it, you'll find it for free somewhere legally, probably. Right. And then with so, bands, I mean... If you just hand out free three CD demos, it's a lot cheaper than, oh, we just yeah. released this 10 song EP yeah. that no one's going to buy. And well, you're yeah. Like, God damn it. When I started, like, you'd be outside the House of Blues, and, like, you know, we were young and we're handing out stuff. You see guys like Crash Poet come out, and, like, they'd have, like, this really nice, you know, CD, and they're handing them out and stuff. And it's like, we'd have these flyers and whatever. And it's like, the CD now might as well be the flyer. Okay. Like, a, a CD costs nothing to buy, and, and, you know, shit nobody even has a cd player at their house they're using like their xbox to listen to the thing so it's like the reality is this is media consumption has become this that i'm better off if i have a studio to go to which i do i'm better off going in every couple months recording three tracks and just releasing them and people will download those and pop and promote those than i am spending a bunch of money on a bunch of stuff that nobody's going to want to buy when you have a merch booth at a at a, at a show fans or fans the people that you trick to go there <laughs> they see that and they go oh, man, I got to spend money over there. I'm not going over there. Right. You know, if you're just like, hey, man, it's all free. Just take it because you know what? You're going to go home and steal it anyways. That's what it's become now. And if you do that enough and you do it the right way and the music is good, then you can make some money at a door somewhere. Otherwise, it's not how it used to be. So So if you don't make CDs, do you guys have shirts or anything that you guys sell? Yeah, yeah. You go through those pretty quick, though. You make them, you go through them, use the money to buy drugs, make some more. <laughs> Drink. But yeah, no, like that stuff, I guess, you know, it's like, but even those though, you tend to almost give away most of them, really. You know, you buy them going, oh, well, we're going to spend $400, but we're going to get $1,000 worth of t-shirts. And it's like at the end of it, it's like, how much do we got? We, all the t-shirts are gone. It's like, well, I got 20 bucks, a sucker, and someone spilled beer in the boot. <laughs> so and that's a true story. Nice. So it's like, well, what do you do with that? Well, fuck, we can't buy more t-shirts with 20 bucks. Okay, well, there's a gram of weed, but now what the fuck do we do, you know? <laughs> Like, so what happens in that is, like, you do, but I think it's more about for the event or the special show. I mean, if you're going to go on the road, go on tour, have your stuff. I mean, that's true. I mean, have some CDs, have some stuff that, that, you know, legitimizes you. Here, take this. But if you're just hanging around locally and you're doing shows and stuff, it's like, dude, you know, hell, get a flash drive made with your music on it. You're better off passing those out. I mean, at least they can use the flash drive again. (laughs) After they delete your music. Yeah. (laughs) It's better than a coaster that you give them for a CD. Plus, it shows, man. People throw those and they hurt. That's Limp Bizkit, they know. <laughs> well, let's play a couple of tracks. Are we playing old or new, Ryan 9? I don't know what you guys are playing, so I'm guessing new. If it's anything off something we brought, it's new. 
Okay. Watch, it's going to be the mellow acoustic one we so put on there first. <laughs> first two songs did you guys want to hear? Gibby, what'd you put on there? Gibby! Uh, Kiss the Sun. Hi, Carly. Let's tell you where you guys nickname. Oh. Because he looks true. like Gibby. That's well, true. he used to. His hair's longer. Nice. Yeah. Kiss the Sun is number one. Yeah, kiss, well, okay. it's all titled. So oh. Kiss the Sun. Don't play that first. Battle That's Cry and I think Brass Tax. All right, let's play. Uh, Brass Let's Bra- play Brass Tax. Brass Tax. Yeah, Kiss the Sun's like the chick tune. So Ooh. play Same the other two that aren't Kiss the Sun. Yeah, just for now. No, later we'll get deep. All right. Talk all right politics. Here we go. Whoa! 
listening to The Metal Experience. Only on Slam Internet Radio. And we are back sitting with the guys from Orion 9. Keep in mind, Ooh. before, because we... Uh, her segment where she reads off the uh, you know the shows coming up, she would butcher your guys' name every. I apologize. I am not time. good at pronouncing anybody's name. To me, yes, Onion Ring, yes. Orion, Oreo, Orion, Orion. Orion. Yeah, got that <laughs> Sorry, Orion Nine. I'm like, that's not a. I word. don't speak that's English very well, so it's not just you guys. That, that is I've... not a registered trademark. <laughs> <laughs> it's infringement. Right. I just had to, had to get that off. Yeah, my let's chest. just embarrass me. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, woo. Um, Stay so we up. played two of your songs, and they yeah. were called what again? Well, I think the first one was actually Midwest, or Mediocre Midwest Train Kill, which is a direct ripoff of uh, Pantera's Great Southern Train Kill. Uh, ours is not as good, which is mediocre. <laughs> and we are from the Midwest. So there you go. We're on roll. All right. Song? I don't know. What was the second one they played? Brass, brass. brass Tags? Brass Tags. Yeah, it was Brass Tags. And what is that one? Uh, well, it's, um, uh, it's pretty deep, you know. Talk about Hemingway and stuff. It's cool. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, it's, it's, it's cool. It's a good song. I don't know. It's whatever the hell you want it to be, man. That's music. Yeah, right. Right. Roll. <laughs> yeah man, Best I don't know. Best descriptions like, ever. <laughs> oh, it's whatever the hell you want it to <laughs> yeah, be. Yeah, dude, that's the point of music, isn't it? Like, hey, I don't care. Use it at a rally. I don't care. I take it you write the lyrics? Yeah, but, well, yeah. I mean, so there's been times throughout the whole time of the band that, like, you know, me and the bass player might sit down and be like, oh, let's you know, write some lyrics for like, you and another guy or you know, whatever, me and Gibby. Like, sometimes I'd be like, hey, what do you think of this? And we'd like, oh, add this. But over the years, the majority, yeah, I mean, you know, it's just kind of how it falls. So where do you get your inspiration from? <sighs> I mean, is there usually yeah, a stag. <laughs> yeah. specific theme that you no, go for? No, or? no. I don't know. You know, it's weird. It's like you just kind of write to the thing, I guess. It's different when you write the music. So I've written some of the music, too, and it's like, when you write the music, I guess it kind of dictates your thought a little bit, but I don't know, it's cool when, like, you go in a room and dudes start jamming a riff and it, like, kind of makes your mind just go. You know, whatever comes to you, it just comes to you and you write it down, you know. I guess stuff that happens kind of influences you, too. And actually, a lot of times you write stuff and then later you go back and you think about it and you're like, oh, that's, okay, that's what I was talking about. That makes sense because I was going through that and see now right here I'm being a little sissy and writing about it. So, okay. That's usually when I go in my room, light some incense and cut my tail. So, <laughs> well, yeah. Is there a song that you've written that's become your favorite over the years? Mm. I know which one I hate. Boom, boom. <laughs> I know which one I hate. I don't know. I'd like to hear this boom, boom. No, song. there's only like what? It's like an old, old recording from like 2003. But I it's like, think I remember this song. <laughs> it's one of those songs people are like, are you guys going to play boom, boom? It's like, yeah, dude, it'll be last. Chill the fuck out. Like, <laughs> we'll play the chorus twice, too, Actually, just for you. Wasn't there a video of Hellfest last year, and all you hear is Randy in the background? Yeah. Boom, boom. 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 Yeah, just yelling at play boom, boom. It's like, dude. I'm pretty sure I, I remember this song. It's brutal. We play it's it, though. Funny. It's kind of funny. It's like, it's that song that you're just like, you don't have to think about. We just play, you know. But I don't know which, I don't know. You got a favorite song, dude? Like, what's your deal? See, what's I your like deal, fun. man? I love it. Yeah, I don't there's, some, cool. there's something about just the way that that song flows. It just I get all like preachy though and religious in that one. I don't like that. <laughs> These nerds are awesome for radio. <laughs> <laughs> so we were talking outside uh, a little bit about the rock and roll revival show that we are actually helping you guys with. Woo. So. Go a little bit into this, because this is the second time you've tried doing this? Yep. Yeah, this is uh, the second year in the row that uh, we're going to be doing a revival. It's kind of wanted to do a end of the summer party. All of our friends come out, hang out for the weekend, get shitty drunk, hang out, have fun. So let's give some details on this as to when, where, how much, all that jazz. Ah, uh, the plug. Well, the plug. Let's the start first with, plug. Let's start with a brief history. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Let's go back to the summer of 1969. <laughs> um, back in 1969, this guy, Bob Gordon, this is a true story in Naperville. Oh, you really? Yeah, we're actually going back. Everyone, everyone. <laughs> okay, we're in 1969 now. Yeah, check it out, right? Watch out for the dogs, protesters. Okay, so 1969. So here's what goes on. This guy, Bob Gordon, in Naperville, starts throwing this party, and he calls it Mugwomp. And he's like, he threw this party for 42 years. And the first year that well, we threw our revival. You mean just every year? Every year at the same time of the okay. year, he would throw this party He's at the end of July. 42-year-long party. Yeah. It just never stopped. Um, and, uh, but, but anyways, you know, and he did this, and it was really cool. And I went for about eight, nine years. And he passed away uh, this last year. But our first year throwing it, he went in the hospital. He, he fell and hit his head. He's old, old man. He's like in his 80s. 
fell hit his head and he ends up dying so we're kind of carrying on the spirit of that too which is kind of like the whole setup of it with uh you know um it's a family friends and reunion for the permit board in batavia so they understand that properly uh it's not a show <laughs> it's a family friends and reunion with some live entertainment because some of our family and friends are in those bands so uh but yeah it's a two-day event um you can start showing up friday morning as early as you want uh two-day passes are available once you get in uh the donation at the door is a suggested uh what was it for the two days gibby for the two days uh we suggested uh it's 28 day um, 20 a day so it's 40 yeah it's yeah, 40, 40 for, for the, the two weekend. day and that gets you the 40 for the weekend gets you a uh, place to camp uh gets you food during the afternoon nighttime and once the kegs get tapped till when the kegs get untapped at 2 a.m all the beer you can drink for both days uh that's a fucking deal yeah dude it is um and then there's one day passes too uh the day of the show those will be 25 uh, you can get them now, though, on the Facebook event page, uh, pre-sale for like 20 And you can actually you can get a two-day pass for 30 bucks right now, pre-sale on Facebook. It's just linked up at PayPal. But it's killer. We got like a huge lineup. We actually are going to have to pull up the lineup because, dude, there's so many bands. Why I can't even do that. I know a couple Gibby? of them is like Mind Shatter yeah, and Dark Internet. Passenger and Armored Assault and you guys. <laughs> wow. You're just I want to say Genotypes on it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Blue Line. Blue, Blue Line. Dark Passenger for sure. Mind you know, shatter. Deadlock. Mind shatter. Deadlock. Depriving yeah. the masses. Dead man's hand. Oh, uh, Dead Light Redemption. Dead Light They're Redemption. out of LaPorte, Indiana. Throw up. <laughs> Stop doing that. <laughs> <laughs> but and in carrying on with the spirit of uh, Bob and Mugwomp, a uh, portion of the like proceeds that we have from yeah. you know from the event, our reunion, uh, we are going to be donating to the Midwest uh, Shelter for Homeless Veterans. Yeah. Which Bob was a. Uh, he was, was a veteran, and he was a big World supporter of the, uh, of the troops. And, you know, we figure yeah. we can have this, like, cool family reunion because, you know, people are out there, you know. It's kind of blowing up, though. I'm not going to lie. It's getting a little out of hand. It went from, like, hey, man, last year we had, like, a day, and we just got some kegs, and we had, like, five bands play. We're, like, cool. And we had a bouncy house, which we'll have this year, too. Nice. And, uh, so I can actually go in the bouncy house without having a <laughs> yeah. age uh-huh. requirement? Oh, yeah. It gets scary, though. I'm not yes! going to lie. It gets scary. <laughs> Once you get about 20 adults in a bouncy house, it becomes a death house. It's a dream um, come true, guys. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but, but this year, it just started growing and growing. And now it's like, I mean, we just got, today we got the uh, Urban Grind TVs coming out. They got a show on Comcast. And uh, they're going to be filming. And it's just kind of like, I don't know, man. It's getting, you know, I've. I think it's going to blow up huge Saturday night. And so, you know, try to get as much money as we can at the door. And what else and did you guys run. have going to be happening? Something about and Band Olympics? Yeah, the Beer Band Olympics, the Orion 9 Liver Challenge. Nice. Yeah, we have, uh, it's bracketed. So if you're in any of the bands, uh, you sign up with a team. And then basically you do three events. And the three events are going to be Flippy Cup, Beer Pong, and Speed Quarters. And the winner gets three hours free at Apotheca Studios, which is uh, the main sponsor, which is on the grounds that we're actually throwing the party in Batavia. That's pretty so, what nice. other events do we have going on? At uh, this let's see. Awesome we got the we got the slip slide races. We got the mud jump with the uh, like the dartboard thingy, and then you pop it. You put a band member up, and they jump in mud. That'd be kind of cool. I was thinking about a kissing booth, and I thought that might get weird. Uh, <laughs> that would get yeah, real weird. Yeah. And actually, after the band stop, though, like the music's not gonna stop because we got like a whole lineup of DJs and like different types of like cool hip hop stuff and like just stuff that we thought was cool, like that me and Gibby kind of checked out and we're like, yeah, these guys are cool. Like, let's let's go for it. So that's just the party's just gonna go all day and night. I mean, it's gonna stop. I'm not gonna sleep. No, it's gonna you're be gonna be awesome. sloppy Saturday afternoon. That stench nice. of just shame and rave, <laughs> and then rock just all over you. I Where is it. this at? Batavia, Illinois. But like Do at you... a park or no, like... no, no. <laughs> are you yard? are you giving away no. this yes. event location the now? The secret location. I was... Oh, it's a secret I'm, location. I'm so confused. I'm just like, well, where where am I well, going? I can tell weeks? you this. I can tell you this. It is located in Batavia, Illinois. It is located near Randall and Main Street in Batavia, Illinois. And if you head slightly west from that point, you'd be there. So it's right in that GPS area. it, Dave. Right. This is like one of those finder games that those weird freaks do out in Colorado. Yeah, so, so when will you be releasing the actual dress uh, for people? The week to go to? of the party. The, the week of the party. party. That Monday, it will be posted on Facebook and all 200 and whatever you that say you're going or whatever. Tell everybody. Tweet it, twit it, twat it. Is there a reason twat why it. you hid the address? Yes. Why? Yeah. Well, mostly so the city of Batavia doesn't show up now and go, what the fuck are you guys doing? <laughs> we um. go, what? No, we looked at, all right, here's the reality. We looked into all the permits, and everything, according to the way we're doing it, is straight. 
We just had to be very careful on the wording, according to them. Okay. And we had to pay fifty dollars uh, in case there's an emergency, Shit. so the yes. fire department can send, like they know to send more things to that place when we call. So they're not oh, just okay. like, oh, let's send one ambulance, and there's like seven hundred zombies on bat salts. <laughs> nice. Awesome. Right. Well, let that sink in for a second, and let's have Dave do his thing. Ah, uh, okay. Whoa. There's no sweeper for you, Dave. There You're is just a sweeper. I said okay. The microphone. No, I was gonna say, you know, at least that's one thing you can't volunteer me for is that kissing uh, booth because they would kissing get booth. Volunteer, Dave. Dave is will kissing be booth. your. He's newly single. He's looking to hit some ladies. Look at, hit some ladies. <laughs> <laughs> he's <laughs> looking to hit ladies, yeah. making his, it way less creepy. With his lips. <laughs> So, Sex uh, on me, rain on you. Yeah. We'll have the metal experience kissing booth, and you can only kiss Dave. Woo! <laughs> Listening to the drug he loves the house please. Let's hear it from the soundboard. Okay. Yeah, but if you volunteer me for that, I'm, I'm thinking you're going to just draw more people away from the event and not actually. <laughs> you really think you're that bad of a kisser? Uh, Dave, no, but I'm you bad would be looking. making out with so many hot dudes. <laughs> 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 That's your department, Luca, not mine. Ooh. Ooh, good one, Dave, you fag. <laughs> what do you got for us? Cool All right, uh, some really quick stuff. Uh, if anyone's interested in, in the um, uh, punk rock band Morning Glory, they're streaming their new song, Life, Life's a Long Revenge, uh, up their upcoming uh, album, Poets Were My Heroes. So that's going to be cool. Well, all right, then, if you say so. It is, because I just saw them not so long ago at Reggie's, and they were kicking ass. All Except right. for that drunk fat fucker, because he can go screw himself, because he ruined the fucking show. Um, well, all right, then. Anyway, uh, Hellcat Records said they were going to release some old uh, Joe Strummer. Joe. Yeah, I can't fucking talk today. Joe Strummer stuff. Uh, and they're going to digitally release, re release that with, um, actually today. So you can go pick that up. Well, there you Thanks, go. Hellcat. I know what I'm doing. I'm going to go pick that up. Because, well, Dave, you made such a convincing <laughs> uh, statement. Well, it's. Coaster. It's, <laughs> it's Joe Strummer's stuff, and it's digitally released, so that's pretty cool. And Hellcat's actually doing something good for once. All right, continue. All right, sorry, my laptop's a little slow. I'd use, the, I'd use this and computer. And so thing. am I. <laughs> yeah, that it's happens. It's probably because you've been looking up a ton of porn, correct? No. All right, liar. No, I, I use the station computer for that. It's much, it's much faster. Who's? The station's computer. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Gross. Creepo. In public? Yes, just like m many people here. Um, Sweet. <laughs> like that old guy who used to be here. Oh, anyway. That guy was cool. Uh, th there, there was a, uh, there's a Russian band out there called Pussy Riot, and they were uh, recently arrested for uh, demonstration over in Russia. Ah. Demonstrating so, what? Sex? I have no idea. <laughs> they were in the middle of show. They say Putin, bad man. We put them in jail. Pussy Rot Riot. <laughs> Don't have fancy things in Russia like Pussy Riot. No, actually, yeah, that's what happened. They were at a show, and they were like, basically like, fuck Putin. And they were like, nah, Putin put the put down. Ah, so I see someone else has heard that's, of this. Oh, yeah, dude. That's I watched Russia. CNN. It made that's CNN, Russia. dude. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is one of the few times that a band's actually... Has any <laughs> idea what Dave is talking about? <laughs> he speaks Klingon like I. Oh, God. Anyway, uh, uh, the, the band, the band Anti-Flag and Adam Vass of uh, LA Dispute have put out some, uh, put out some shirts, and they're tr oh, yeah. trying to raise some money to uh, get them out of jail. Cool. So it just says uh, anti-flag. It says a uh, free pussy riot. I kind of want that shirt just because it says pussy riot. And how much is it, Dave? Uh, they're not giving me a description. I think you have to go to the website. So Good. great. Um, Donation is in rubles. <laughs> <laughs> uh, apparently, Napalm Death and Exhumed are coming here to Chicago. Sadly, they're not coming with Municipal Waste for some reason or another. What? Were they expected to come with well, Municipal Waste? Well, th they're going to join them later on the tour, just not here. Interesting. Yeah, cool. it's kind of cool. weird. Um, uh, up until their show in St. Paul, that's when Municipal Waste joins the tour. But you can oh. catch Still Cast, Napalm Death, and Exhumed, and some uh, other uh, small-time bands that are not listed on the thing They're here. They're playing Reggie's, right? Yeah, November 3rd at Reggie's. Boom. All right. Anything else, Dave? <coughs> uh, yeah. Uh, just two more things. Les and Jake are uh, releasing a new album called Greetings and Salutations, October 15th. They've been terrible for kind of a long time now. But continue. And last but not least, uh, Streetlight Manifesto. Never heard of them. A band that recently uh, got on the bad side of Victory Records by saying, screw you, we're going to release our own album. Because um, Victory Records blows. Yeah, pretty much. They, they weren't, they weren't going to give them the freedom to do what they wanted with their album, so they said, fuck you. And, uh, and they, they're actually giving out uh, the link to the torrent at their shows because they didn't feel like you should pay for the album. Fuck yeah, why don't they just man. give it out over the information superhighway? They did. There was like, if you, can't, if you don't want to buy the album, come, uh, ask me and I'll give you the torrent link. Nice. 
That's that's sweet. So or they're gonna rebels. <laughs> Or they could have the just art. used a SoundCloud account. Ah, Very true. Boom. Uh, but they announced they're going to be. Uh, the, they're now. The album's going to come out. Uh, if it's not. Um, Jeez, it, Dave. It, here's what they said, though. Because uh, <laughs> I'm trying to read like 20 things at once here. Uh, you, you'll know more about it when the, uh, about the album <laughs> next week. If, if, it's, if it's good news or bad news, it's out of our hands. All right. Oh, Dave. So uh, you did announce a couple things, so I'll say it for you. Uh, Death Go album three. Releasing October 16th. Ah, no one cares. I cares. Death Clock, really? We were supposed to be seeing them tonight, but that two were canceled. Yeah, but you also have a show to do, so I think that's a little more important. Well, we originally didn't have a band schedule because we had tickets to see Death Clock. (laughs) Yeah, dude. So. Oh, I'm sorry. (laughs) We're yours. But my bad. No, the two are canceled. But then the two got canceled. We're like, fuck, now we need a band. And you guys are like, we'll we'll do it. And I'm like, yes. I'm glad we are the cheapest hand job you can find. (laughs) Um, you guys are doing a great job. And then also, Luke and I uh. went to uh, Summer Slaughter at the Rave on Friday, and it was badass. It was, was pretty cool? sweet. It was, was cool? amazing. I think actually, Tony's band played up there. Actually, Periphery especially. just dropped the show yesterday, their whole tour uh, for the rest of it, because some family emergency. So we got lucky because we got to see Periphery. And they were badass. They were awesome. They signed our poster. And that new guy. They touched per- my penis. Uh, the new singer of The Fiercest. I liked them. They were awesome. Did not understand why he kept giving the Klingon symbol. <laughs> See? <laughs> Every else? time. No. That is the Vulcan, Vulcan. symbol. Oh, Vulcan. Ah, Whatever. I was like, really, guy? You do not want to insult the nerd. Oh, God. Okay. No. They hold that shit right. Radio, is it? Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was a little bizarre. What kind of fucking shit is this? <laughs> We're out. I'm done. Bye. <laughs> Summer Slaughter was badass this year. Had a lot of fun there. So, well, anyway, right. back and to the And the rave is a really cool yeah, place. It is. It's huge. Well, it was They're actually awesome. the Eagles Ballroom. The rave's downstairs. The underground's even lower. Wait, there's an underground? The rave the is the basement. There's a, how do you get to the basement? You've got to go outside. Right through the, the, the side door that goes downstairs. The Eagles what? Ballroom is where we were. Yeah, there's like four venues in that thing. Yeah, Every it's ridiculous. Different. It's a promoter's wet dream. Yeah. Uh, I want to go in the basement. <laughs> it's not that great. I don't care. We were, Where's the swimming it? pool? I saw this picture of a yeah. swimming pool. You know where that is? In the in the rave. Apparently, yeah, there's pictures up, all over the walls of like there's one what of it used to look pool. like. There's a pool somewhere. No, I never seen a pool in there. Maybe in the old days, maybe when it was like an That's actual ballroom, like all like uh, Jimmy Stewart. They opened the floor. Well, there is a ballroom. It's upstairs. That's what I mean. Like maybe yeah. when it was like that, they had a pool in the floor. Probably that shit was dope back in the twenties, man. That's what they did. It looked pretty sweet. You know, Jeffrey Dahmer's like hotel is like right across the street from there. Really, right? ambassador? Yeah, and uh, room was at like four twenty or something like that. Mm-hmm. He stayed in. The our buddies in our hotel that's yeah. across the street. Yeah. Why didn't we go hang out at that hotel? Why our buddies we? used to stay there when we used to play up there. <laughs> like they used to stay in that hotel. Nice. I guess. That's cool. <laughs> like, I guess. Why didn't anyone tell me that? We could have gotten a picture in I'm front of it. Derek. It would have been like. Well, we'll go back there. Battle. We'll go back there. Don't worry. That's an awesome venue. We'll travel. We'll make the distance. All right. So back to this awesome, awesome tour. Talking more about it. Erection. Um, well, not tour, but. Shows. Family reunion. Yes, family <laughs> reunion that you are holding. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have any special surprises going to happen or anything that Yes, you but those are surprises. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Did uh, we get the full band lineup? Did you pull that up? Um, my phone is currently about to die, so Gibby's going to do that right now on oh. his iPhone. Plug. You got the app? Pulling it off the... Uh, what are in, dude. Who are these other sponsors that you guys... Well, let's see. We got we just a bunch of local people. We had we had one good one. Now we pooted him. Um, and um, But we, we got like, uh, was it Noble Metal Alliance, Chicago Noble Metal of Order, guys? Noble Order. Yeah. Chicago I always get them all confused. Alliance. No offense to Randy. I get the Metal Alliance confused with the Noble Order, yeah. guys. But they're all both involved, so that's cool. Everyone's like coming together and hugging and shit over some beers. Are they going to get along? <laughs> they better. Ugh. It's a family reunion, so probably yeah. no. Yeah, right. Do second cousins ever get along? Uncle fighting. <laughs> oh, that's a whole different molestation. Oh. Um, so yeah, no, it's gonna be really cool. I think I think the the coolest thing about it, though is like how much the bands like. It's cool because like, it's not really. I know it sounds stupid because we're senior promoting. It's not really about the bands. It's about the party. The bands are secondary. It's like hey, it's this kick ass fucking party. There's some bands playing too, which is cool. But like, we really want people to have something to go to to like do something. I mean, the problem is you go to these shows, and it's like, maybe you don't like the band that's playing, but maybe you want to check out a band later, and it's like, what do you do? You stand around, you drink, you're like, this kind of fucking sucks. Yeah, yeah. Let's go talk to those people. Okay, that's done. All right. Now what? You know, it kind of sucks. So we want a lot of activities and stuff to do and stuff you, like, when you're drunk, what do you want to do? You want to get stupid, and you want to do stupid shit. 
So if we give you said stupid shit, it'll somehow organize the chaos. So what do you nice. suggest for people coming, camping out for this two-day event? What do you suggest you bring and what yeah. you don't bring? Well, I'd get there as early as you can, possibly Friday, so you can get your spot good. And the first um, band plays at what time? Uh, give me what time? Five, five I think. Five it starts PM. early. Yeah, it starts at five. We got, uh, what, 21 acts over two days or something like that. It's ridiculous. But uh, I'd bring, you know, your tent. Make sure to have, like, you know, your tarp. I mean, if, you, if you've ever been camping, you know what to bring. I mean, you know, um... If you haven't, you probably want to sleep in your car. That's a safe bet, too. Um, you know, bring some backup stuff. If you want to bring a grill, I mean, we'll have food, but if you want to bring a grill, that's always cool. I'm going to bring my grill. Bring booze if you want. You know, bring some hard liquor. Everyone shares. Uh, bring whatever else you want, if you know what I mean. It's cool. Like, and, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, just bring your stuff. Come out and party. Plan to be there for two days. Plan to get, like, ugly and sweaty There's and no nasty. showers. No. There'll be some porta potties. There might be a lake. Is there a lake to jump in? <laughs> There's a puddle that's mighty big. <laughs> <laughs> no, you'll, we'll have love on ground running water and stuff like that. So if you want to like hose off or something, you know. Oh, I love hosing off. It is nice. It is a pleasure of life, the hose. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, you know, but again, the beer. Think about it. I mean, what you would spend at a bar to get into a show and then spend on drinks and everything, you could like drink nonstop for You could two do days. that for two days and then feed yourself. Yes. And what kind of food are you going to be having? Well, we got, let's see, brats, hot dogs, burgers. Just like stuff like that, you know, some chicken army. wedge. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a lot of stuff. I mean, you got to kind of calculate, and you don't really know. I mean, the kegs alone, I mean, God knows. I mean, we're exp- <laughs> we're like looking at numbers, we're like, well, maybe like ten kegs. Like, what are you stupid? No, we need like twenty. Well, twenty is not enough now. Well, maybe like thirty kegs. And I mean, that guy who used to throw mugwomp is going through like eighty-five kegs in a weekend. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, <durham>. yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's eighty-five kegs is like unheard of. I've yeah. never. I. I well, because the drinking, like, I don't think you I've start. ever seen a keg work. Like, yeah, you, what happens is you, you, just start, you, dozer. you just, uh, you loser. Yeah. All right. You just, kinda, it, you just start drinking, you know? Gonna, you got it? All right. Yeah. Gibby announcement. Here we go. Let's, uh, let's see the guy who did the booking. Did it, uh, dozer at Mudshell, also one of the sponsors. Yeah. Dozer. Thank you for this text message, Dozer. All right. Here we go. He's we listening. Have, he is listening. It's good. <laughs> you smell those. <laughs> Tinting glass. Special thanks to Dozer for actually setting up this interview with you guys. Oh, he sent me it too. Well, I'm <laughs> stupid. <laughs> wow, man, Dozer's <laughs> on top of shit. You guys are lucky to have Collins, man. He'd be on. I'm like, this is Dozer. How you doing? I just want to say you guys are awesome. I hope he's laughing and not well, hating. Here we go. All right, are you ready? Light up. All right, we have Orion 9, Deadlock Ooh. for sure, Our Father's Burden, Mind Shatter, Dark Passenger, Iridium Grin, Flux, Unwritten Truth, Sever Beginning. Triggerfish, Jagged, Dead Man's Hand, Depriving the Masses, Deadlight Redemption, Armored Assault, Ground Effect, The Darksiders, Genotype, and Munger. Munger. Nice. And he just responded, what's up? L-O-L. Sounds He's right laughing there, Dozer. out he loud. He is laughing out loud. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Internet Sounds radio like an rules. awesome lineup. <laughs> it's going to be long. We can reach the masses out here. Look. <laughs> There's some good DJs too. What's that chick DJ? Uh, DJ Dayu. Yeah. Is, uh, we got Miss Bonnie Blue. Miss Bonnie Blue's been at the Elbow there. Room. Um, yeah. The DJs, honestly, I'm looking forward to because, like, I think like it's a cool mix of people, you know? Because like, the metalheads that are really into metal will be so drunk. Like, they used to happen to be on tour. Like, you'd think like Vinnie Paul would be like, "Fuck this dance music shit, dude." You get that guy backstage, and you start cranking Nelly, and he's jumping around just like everybody else. You know, oh it's my like God. you get so that there's drunk. going to be dancing. This is like the best party I am ever going to go to. There's going to be dancing, not only dancing, yeah. but dancing to Nelly. Yeah. yeah. Well, I did not say that. No, no, Boom. no. I said that happened. There'll probably uh, be a lot of <laughs> dub stuff. Well, the step has been dubbed. I don't think we're. There'll be. So, oh. <laughs> Don't if attack your yourself, fucking mic right? attacks me again, so help me God. <laughs> I think you stepped on it. I, I will think call you my dozer. The yeah, that's not legitimate <laughs> the fight rape. There. Oh, I worked it in CNN. <laughs> um, okay, so. No, the thing is, though, is that I have no clue what the fuck we're talking about. stupid. <laughs> yeah. All uh, right. Yeah. No, so whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect transition. Yeah, way to go. Woo. Awesome. Well, <laughs> let's take a quick break because it's getting really hot in here. Um, that's what it is. That's a Nelly song, hot in here. Oh. Okay. That See, was it. Yeah, I dubstep. It. I plugged dubstep. It. Oh, dubstep. No, yeah. yeah, we cut out a lot of the dubstep. There's a bunch of different types of DJs. Like, okay. Like but there is a dubstep one. Oh, yeah. Oh, sure. Oh, stop it. Dubstep. Dubstep we is actually, metal. Uh, we have techno. a good dubstep guy coming out. Uh, 8-Track. Yeah, this kid 8-Track. Shout out to 8-Track. Uh, yep. Wherever you are, Malcolm. Hope you're listening. Woo. Nice. He's coming out. Little wet kids running DJ game. Oh, jeez. So we pulled up your SoundCloud. Is there any, uh, we'll go out with that awesome song that you brought on the USB that got really deep. 
But let's uh, hear something off your SoundCloud. Uh, let's hear a couple songs. What you got? Mary goes, Mary goes around. Is Mary goes around on there? Uh, let me see here. Uh, we got Shy Town, Boom Boom, Fallen, <gasps> Say Hey, Brass <laughs> Tax, Kiss the Sun, Boom Boom, <laughs> Midwest, and Battle Cry boom, from boom. Milk Dud. We'll uh, go out with Boom Boom tonight. Let's play uh, Battle, Battle Cry. Cry. Yeah, I don't think you did that. That's off the new one too. The Econo Lad Sessions. Download Woo! it for free, please. Go to SoundCloud. Download. Wait, did we play Battle Cry already? I thought we no, because we played Midwest and we played Brass. Dozer Tax. wants okay. to hear Shy Town. Those are okay, so we'll hear Shy Town and we'll hear Battle Cry. All right, Shy Town and Battle Cry. Here we go. Not necessarily in that order. That isn't just an abstract intellect. It's a brain that remembers and feels and suffers. <laughs>
You're listening to the Metal Experience. Only on Slam Internet Radio. Woo! That was awesome. We just heard two more songs from Orion 9, and they were... Uh, Battle Cry for Milk Dud and Shy Town. And Shy Town. And Dozer, that video is from Shark City. Yes. There yes. we go. It's old. So that uh, rock and roll revival show is September 7th. And 8th. And yep. 8th, and, and you leave the 9th. Yeah, get drunk the fuck out on the 9th, please. Nice. <laughs> By it's noon, gonna be please. Yeah, if you can. Awesome. You know, if you can. I mean, just make your way out in orderly fashion. It'd be nice. Do you guys have any other shows coming up? Uh, yeah. Uh, we had a couple that were coming up in September, but they got moved, canceled. We were supposed to do uh, Scum of the Earth and uh, some other stuff. But October 5th, we'll be at Brower House with... Um, do you remember that band's name out of Arizona? No. no. A Fall to Break. A Fall to yeah, Break. We're bringing them in from Arizona. They're going to be coming up. They're on tour, so they're going to make a stop. I'm going to jam with them. And then um, October 20th, we're in LaPorte, Indiana, which I think it's uh, called The Warehouse. Warehouse with Dead Light. With Dead Light Redemption. My Enemies Fall, I think. My Enemies Fall. Aren't they out of Kansas? Or they're out of Michigan. Michigan. My Enemies Fall is out of Michigan, yeah. So October, we'll be back in swing, so. And do you have any plans uh, as to when you're thinking about releasing new songs? Uh, I don't know. Like Next year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe like Christmas. You know, sometime around there. I don't know. Like, we'll get in the studio. We'll do, we'll maybe do a Christmas album. Summer. Yeah. Do we'll some, record like three songs. Some Christmas covers. Yeah. Killer, dude. That'd be awesome. <laughs> That'd be Grandma boss. got run over by a reindeer. Don't, and don't red just say that, that, like that. You guys shouldn't be like August Burns Red. You should be better than that. What? Oh, Dave. What the hell is August Burns Red? Is, it, is that another band that no one's ever heard of? <laughs> no. <laughs> Mor- Morgan knows them. Oh, yeah, Dave. Luca and I both know Morgan them. Morgan loves them. I love them. I do. Dozer. Do you know these bands? <laughs> <laughs> is Dozer here? I don't, I don't know. know. Where the hell are you talking Dozer? Yeah. He wanted to come, but he, you guys didn't invite him. He can text in what? his answers. He could have asked. Are you serious? <laughs> he did, he did, not, he did not say that to you. You he totally just it, called yeah, him out no. on the air. <laughs> Great. I hope you know he's at home <laughs> and, like, in the middle of his jerk-off session, he he's just He's just like, oh, I don't think I'm invited, guys. He could have just came <laughs> out. Oh, Dozer. Dozer, if you're at home, dude. He's like, what oh, the they hell? never asked me to come Oh, home. my God. <laughs> <laughs> I, was oh. Like, I mean, you arrange this. Why wouldn't you be allowed to? So oh, my God. This does God. not sound like Dozer, a man I that sends you. another man an email that says, come on. <laughs> you know what's going on. Yeah, you know what's going on here, Dozer. You know what's going on. Man, that's sad. Why are you going to say that kind of shit? How do you know him? I don't know. I don't even know Dozer, man. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was a dude from Ghostbusters, and he wasn't. <laughs> so I don't know. No, we we met him because like we were doing. He asked us to do a show at Club Thirty Eight, and we we're like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. And then we were like, all right, let's do it. And it turns out like we knew him from this band Jagged. He's the brother of the dude in Jagged, and like it just you know, we kind of hit it off. And he wanted to work with us, so we we're like, all right, cool, let's form like you know join forces, and, you know, yay. I don't know, <laughs> like <laughs> yay. Go Dozer, much L. Yeah, there you go. Facebook, go. And Gibby, how long have you been working with these guys? Huh. No. Let's talk a little bit. This is not a job. <laughs> this is not a job that you want. <laughs> tell you that's right now. Uh, I don't know. I've been working with Frank for about two years. Started off with the Ryan Nines, kind of help him out with, uh, you know, as every good person does. Managing booking stuff. If, if you call that. Yeah. Returning phone calls that Frank didn't. Want yeah. To. It's too much for one person like to do to everything. to Tim? To Tim? Yeah, kind <laughs> of, actually. Gibby, did you want to text Tim about that show? Yep. All right. <laughs> and then uh, we just kind of ended up uh, hitting off, working a lot together, doing a bunch of shows, kind of getting stuff together. We started up uh, RNG together, the Rick and Gibby show. and Shit show. It is a shit show if you've ever been. Uh, we do them sometimes at JD Muggs. Buzz bomb. Buzz bomb. We just get, like, he, he spins, he gets drunk, I get drunk. I just talk on the mic and yell a lot of obscenities and jump around. It's not like a rap or anything. It's not like, there's no, it's not like a performance. It's like you're literally just watching us get drunk on stage while he plays some music, and I'm just like, all right, what the fuck? Whoa, Richard. Yeah, let's talk about this long story that you didn't give me yet of how you got a nickname from Frank to Rick. It's kind of weird, actually. This is what happened. And actually, it has nothing to do with Rick. I don't know how this came to be, but it's kind of like this. It's like, we were going on tour, and we had to be um, in Florida for, like, this week-long thing in Florida. And we left all late, and we were in Indiana, and we were kind of, like, on that stretch of 65 or whatever. And um, a bungee cord went into the van tire, and then it, it swung around and, like, decked the van all crazy, and it blew out the tire. 
So we had to pull over with the van and, like, the, the trailer and everything. So we get out, and we're like, oh, fuck, you know. I'm like, all right, well, let's undo it, and we'll get the tire off, whatever. So we get the jack under the car, and we start going to turn the jack. And, like, the jack has, like, a, like a, like a, like a, a you know, a circle. You put the little thing in, you crank it. Well, the thing breaks. And I'm like, what the fuck, dude? I'm like, really? Like, we're stuck in Indiana. We, we're losing time. Like, fuck. So, like, at the time, like, I was smoking a lot of reefer. I used to smoke then, I still smoke now, but I was smoking more then. And so, like, what happened was, is, like, I'm like, all right, fuck this, like, light, light, light me up a joint. And I was doing a lot of steroids at the time. Like, I used to be, like, really ripped. Like, seriously, no, like, really, it sounds funny. Like, like I know. Like, man. Well, yeah, I wish, but, like, yeah, kind of. Like, I was out of my mind. And, like, so, like, <laughs> so I get underneath this, this van. He lifts the bus up. No, I took, I took my little key clip, like, the mountain climber key clip. And I put it in my hand, and I put it in the clamp, and I just started turning it by hand and jacking the car up. And Frankie, the drummer from Dirge now, he was in the band's time, and uh, he's like, holy shit. And he takes the, he's, he never smokes pot, and he grabs the joint, and he's like, he's like, look at, look at fucking Rick Horvath's down there, the ultimate American badass. And I'm just like, oh, he turned this thing, and that's where the name came from, Rick Horvath. I mean, it was just, I mean, it was funny, because, like, I don't know why he said that, what it was, I don't know, it was just... I was, like, roided out of my mind. I was pissed. I was half drunk. I was stoned. I'm like, we have to go. This is happening. And I, I, I jacked the whole car by hand. It was insane, dude. <laughs> and my Frankie's just like, holy shit. Oh, oh. He's like, weird little Polish kid, if you don't know him. It's, it's, it's a lot funnier if you do. But um, he also doesn't drink when he eats. Odd side note. But um, Like pop like, or he'll, water? He'll eat, like, an entire meal without taking a sip of any liquid. And I was like, dude, what are you doing? He's like, I don't like to get full on beverage. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, weird. <laughs> what the fuck? All right, man. <laughs> yeah. Don't so. you need the liquid to break up your food? Nah, man. <laughs> not, not You're made breaking. of liquid. No. <laughs> but yeah, so that's how I got the nickname Rick. And Gibby, I gave Gibby the nickname because he looks like Gibby from iCarly. He used to look more like Gibby from iCarly. The fact that you watch iCarly. Well, I also have a four year old daughter. Okay. So, but I used to watch iCarly before I had my yeah, first so. <laughs> so it was like a SpongeBob iCarly block that I used to watch while doing one hitters. Um, <laughs> now I just watch it uh, with my daughter. <laughs> so, but yeah. So I was like, "Oh, you look like Gibby," and he kind of acts like, like who? Oh. No, he well, knew. you gotta watch this he show knew. iCarly. He knew. That's what's scary. He knew. He's like Gibby. It's hard to deny. It's hard to deny the Gibby. Victorious, I watch as well. It's a little bit more skanky though. But it's victorious. Girls. It's another show on Nickelodeon where girls like kind of high school girls sporting tats. Yeah, at a young so age, my daughter's like, "Oh, I like her tattoo." I'm like, "Yeah, oh, that's great." Yeah, it's awesome. You're four years old. You're not getting one anytime no. soon. I give her all the fake tattoos because like I have tattoos, and she'll be like, "I want a tattoo." So you put a tattoo on her, and then she walks around, and people are like, "You're a bad parent." I'm Any like, face tattoos? No. Oh. On my daughter? No. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> like, Dad, look, I got a face tattoo. I'm not your father. What? <laughs> <laughs> you do not come out of your mother's vagina like that. Oh, God. Is there any place that you guys haven't played that you guys are looking to play eventually? Uh, whew, some high X boobies. No, <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, maybe more for Damon. I mean, I, I've been lucky. I've played pretty much everywhere in Chicago over the past 12 years that I could possibly say like oh i want to play like there and played with really cool bands so i don't know locally if there's really you know i wish i could I, i'd like to get back in the metro again but i don't really think it's what i think it used to be so i don't know if that's just me like being like oh, nostalgic about it I but think, like, aragon would be bad. <laughs> yeah well if we can get in the aragon we probably have like a lot of oh, other yeah. things going on so <laughs> like yeah so i don't know yeah that's, i mean locally not really like small no. stuff yeah. So I've been fortunate enough to hit quite a few recently in the last year and a half, thank God. I'd like to play like one of those huge outdoor like Swedish metal fests where there's like fifty thousand people. Yeah. Like, like a C. Yeah, like but like that's just Germany. stupid well yeah, but either way, wherever. Like somewhere they don't speak English. And like really like cause that stuff's crazy. Like that blows my mind that, that many people show up for that shit. Have you guys it's toured nice. Europe at all? No, no. I've always wanted to, but it's just I mean, I, 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 like, I know how to go about doing it, but it's just, it's a lot. I mean, you got, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of upfront stuff you have to do to get that to happen. And I don't know. I mean, I feel like it would go well, but I don't think it would go well because it's us. Like, we <laughs> fuck it up. What's somehow. the furthest that you guys have actually traveled then to play? Um, well, coast to coast. I mean, we've been, I don't, I, I don't know. I mean, been to California, been to New York, Florida. been to Florida. So, I mean, all through, you know, 
zigzag. I mean, Canada? I, uh, no, actually, we've never been out of the country. And there's reasons for that. Some of us can't get passports for, like, things that we're clearing up <laughs> and shit. Like, you know. Well, then Europe's never happening. <laughs> right, well, <laughs> hey, man, Julius Assange, that's all. I don't know. So, um, yeah, it's cool. I don't know. We've been all over the country, you know. I prefer going out and playing outside, you know, places. Like, even Laporte, even, is not that far, but it's, like, such an awesome market to go play. Yeah. Everybody's really cool out there. Rockford. Rockford. Rockford's sick, yeah. We did that Rock in the Valley thing. Okay. Actually, I can't remember <laughs> what band's coming in, but somebody's looking to play Bar 3 coming up on a bar date. Bar 3. In Rockford. The I genotype? can't remember. Genotype's looking yes. for a, someone yes. to play Bar genotype 3. Genotype looking yeah. to play Bar 3. Yeah, hey. We would do it, but our guitarist, Tim, is going to do a barbecue, and he didn't mark Yay. it right on the calendar, Google Calendar. Exit out. I'll just put a time, dude. <laughs> so, Because I'd like to play that, but I, I, we haven't been in Bar 3. No. I hear it's nice. I hear things. District. The new one up there now. Ooh. Is there any band that you guys haven't played with, either signed or unsigned, that you guys are looking to play with? Huh. 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 We never played with Seven Dust. Of all the bands of that style, we never got to play with them. That'd be kind of cool. I guess I just liked them from when I was younger. Yeah. And then, like, the big ones, obviously, like Metallica and shit like that. I mean, I don't know. I've been fortunate to play with a lot of cool bands over the years. So, like, that list has gotten kind of smaller. And now it's like the list is kind of those outrageous groups where you're like, it's never like Orion 9 and U2 come into Soldier <laughs> Field. Like, like, holy shit, Led Zeppelin and the Beatles got together for one fucking night and Orion 9's opening. <laughs> like, oh, thank God. We only have to sell 5,000 fucking presale tickets at a million dollars a piece. Yeah, that's not going to happen. So, I mean, yeah, I don't know. Sure. You've done it all is basically what you're trying to say. No, but the bands that you play with when you play for a long time, it's like you get to play with, like, Anthrax. You get to play with, like, you know, all the the new metal bands, your dope, Saliva, Chimeras, you know, Exodus. I mean, dude, the list is just, you know, and it's like, at a point, it's like, there's there's few shows where you're actually really excited to be like, oh, I'm going to see this band. It's going to be awesome. Because you're just like, well, i got to go play a show. Like, I'm going to go do what I do because that's what I do. And then go throw up in the parking lot. Because that's what you do. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> but but it's cool, yeah. Like, when we played with Anthrax a couple times, like, that was really cool. Like, Hell Yeah was really cool because there's, like, legendary people. So that stuff's really cool. I met Bono. I sniffed him. I was like, <laughs> he smelled like booze. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your Facebook thing in the, the corner? Bono I thing. sniffed Bono. Yeah. He smelled like booze. Yeah, dude. He was, he was, a, f- he was a weird man. He's <laughs> short, dude. All those dudes are short. You think they're going to be like these monster people? Yeah. And Oprah builds them up so big, and then you meet them, and it's like, little man. Smelled like hate for Catholics. Well, not everyone would be like Peter Steele either. And what about you? Is there any band that you wanted to play with? I would love to play with Mudvayne, but that would require a better band. (laughs) (laughs) Word. (laughs) Being a band of 12 years, how have you guys not gotten signed? Uh, I mean, you played with yeah. all these bands before. Yeah. I mean, you have a reputation. The, the issue kind of falls on, honestly, in the end is like... You, Passports. You ru- <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> no, you run into people that just... It, it's it, If it gets real, they, f- they freak out and they bail. And it's a, not as easy as you would think to just be like, well, we'll just get a replacement. You know, we'll just find a guy because we have this deal. It's like, well, no, it doesn't work like that. You know, it's like... We've had, we've had some offers and, and things like that, but then all of a sudden, oh, well, this guy now, he's, he doesn't want to tour anymore. You know, you're like, well, what the fuck, dude? What are you doing here? You know, so it's like, not him, the touring thing. What the fuck, guy in blue shirt walking up? What are you doing here? <laughs> Fucking up my vibe, man. But, um, yeah, so that's kind of what happens. And honestly, though, in the end, I think it's interesting because I think that although it would have been cool and there would have been maybe some more cool shit to come out of it, like, if we would have got signed, like, 07, 08, like, we would be unsigned by now. We, we'd be off a label. No, because, dude, what, name me a label that's worth a shit right now. That's honestly worth a shit. I mean, there, there is no label anymore. There's a dude who'll give you a loan at a shitty fucking rate. Guess what? I can go to Chase and do that. Oh, I need an app? Okay, I can go to Reverb Nation. Oh, digital distribution? Okay, I could do that myself. Oh, I, I got to be, oh. I could do every fucking thing you can do, you could do by yourself. You just don't have the loan from the bank. You don't even need fucking hookups. Go hire a fucking kick-ass booking agent. There you go. You get on tour. I mean, it's, so what is a label anymore? They don't really exist. It's, and the guys that are labels just have money, man. So now it's like, why get signed? What's the point? I'd rather make all the money and be like, well, fuck. Like, you know, and be like in control of all that stuff instead of it being the other way around. So basically after 12 years, you know your shit. 
it's just like if, well you're just like dude you've been fucked so many times like you know I mean, I mean you your just, ass can only take so much. Yeah, so then you move your mouth, and then that gets sore. <laughs> your fucking ear hurts. Your nose is sore. And you're like, what do you do? You know, you can't your copper tunnel? You can't do handies. I mean, I don't know. Like, it's just at a point, it's like it, the musician. If you're gonna evolve, I feel like you have to go from being a musician to, well, okay, if I actually want to do something with this, like I have to think beyond just being a musician now. Like, what is what what, what is the other stuff that's involved? And if you can control that and make all those hookups yourself, that's invaluable. I mean, you know, you don't need someone else to do it then. And what's next for you guys? Hopefully a smoke break. Fuck, <laughs> <laughs> man. Booze and hookers well, at the for, Bellagio. As a band, know. like, where do you see yourselves? Are uh, still a band in 12 more years? or? Well, Kip would be dead because he's like 40-something years old. So <laughs> Kip would be like half in the grave. <laughs> uh I don't know. What do you think? I never think about it. I never really go that far. Yeah. Orion 9 isn't really about thinking ahead. <laughs> it's about thinking with your head, you know? Because <laughs> really, it's like it's about going out and having fun. I mean, the one thing, like, I'll go to every show, and what do you hear me say? I'm like, oh, man, I don't want to fucking play, dude. What mm -hmm. the fuck? But it's like, really, like, you go up there, though, and you play. But it's like, really, it's you go because you want to go drive somewhere. You want to have some drinks. You want to, like, hang out with your buddies, meet some people. It's like... So, we'll, I don't know, I'll probably keep doing that for the next 12 years. Yeah. I don't know if I'm going to keep playing, though. I mean, you know. Because, <laughs> I mean, dude, like, the revival itself, I mean, next year we're going to have two. And one will be in Indiana. And then we're going to keep growing that, too. We have other things nice. we think of outside of just... Orion 9 is not just a band anymore. Orion 9 has grown into, like, hey, what can we do idea-wise to generate revenue? Right. Like, besides just let's go play a fucking show. You know, what is there to be? So if you get pretty a much dudes, like a company. Yeah, if you get a group of dudes that are all thinking beyond that, I mean, that's going to get you further. You know, I mean, success is not fame. That's for sure. So because I know a lot of famous people that are just like on skid fucking row, you know, mm -hmm. like, like, hey, man, weren't you famous? Yeah, man, you got a quarter. It's like, nah, I'll show you my balls, though. And <laughs> it's like, yeah, dude, I was I was smoking a blunt with Afro, man, like. What, three months ago? Like me three and Gibby months. me and Gibby were at Q Billiards and um the Rick and Gibby show was opening with uh Edgy, you Q, decide. Q Billiards, where's the uh Darian. Darian. It's the old owner from uh, Shark City, Bob Taft okay. bought it and uh so he had Afro Man, so he had us open for Afro Man, like the Rick and Gibby show with uh Edge. And uh we're all back smoking with Afro Man and this guy's just telling us like yeah, man, like, I didn't copyright my name. Fucking skateboard company owns my name. I don't got a goddamn dime. I'm making money on ringtones. My family's staying at the Days Inn right now. And then he's like, I'm not trying to get weird, but you boys you boys familiar with the Bible? And we're like, oh, what the fuck, dude? So we're, like, <laughs> we're like, just sing the Because I Got High song and get the fuck off stage, bro. <laughs> like, nice. So. Oh, Afro, man. Have you saw the pictures from that? It looks like he rolls pretty hard. He comes out in a full, full Sunday best. <laughs> Oh, dear God. Yes. He's a preacher now. Preacher, yes. Mm. Gold cufflinks and all. Mm. Well, well, I, I, well that, doesn't mean a, that doesn't mean shit. I'm ordained. <laughs> That's true. That That's makes true. four of us in this room. <laughs> We're ordained yeah. off the internet. All right, Universal Life Church. You guys are yeah. all... Hell yes. Jeez, yes. things are weird. Hey, let's... Nice. Who wants to get married? First person to come to the Fishbowl studio. Come out here and get married. Here I did go. that already. <laughs> I married go. someone in the Fishbowl. married someone on... The air. How did that oh, work? It was fun. It was R just through over the you know, like monitor that we're doing now. Were they in prison? <laughs> no. <laughs> sort of. So does anyone else have a title? Because I my title's rabbi. Rabbi. <laughs> I'm also working on my Jedi Knight title. <laughs> I'm, I'm, How many I'm, XP is that? I'm, I'm Reverend Franklin Lloyd Horvath the Fourth. Nice. nice. That's shrimp and money, as Gibby would say. <laughs> that is shrimp and That's money. shrimp and money. Not now. That Mississippi. What are dry. your titles, Reverend? Both of you. Are you a reverend, Gibby? I am. You Indeed. are a reverend. United. Yeah, uh, Go in peace. United <laughs> father. I'm a father. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Things just got weird. Let's hear uh, some of them that Luco Ooh. has to say. <laughs> now it's time for... Hey, man, look what I found. Only on the Middle Experience. This week we got Teeth Like Lions from Crescent, Oklahoma. Teeth Wh Like Lions. It sounded like you said lines. Lions. Lions. What she said. <laughs> From Crescent, Oklahoma, with the song The End. Check them out. Run! 
You're listening to The Metal Experience. Only on Slam Internet Radio. And we're back. That was Teeth Like Lions from Frank's Crescent, making dinosaur Oklahoma noises with the song The End. Check them out. Oklahoma! And we're back. What's up, GOP? We're back with Orion 9. Not to be confused with Onion Ring 9. Or Orion 9. Or Orion 9. Or Aaron 9. I don't Google does what automatically autocorrect. Mm, we are, yeah, it's on Google. So, where can people find you guys on the internet and all your shows coming up and your music and all that jazz? Well, if you are alive today, you know how to use a computer. Take the name Orion 9, type it into said search engine, and voila, the mystery of the internet is open to you. <laughs> That's about it. We're the only Orion 9. I think there's like one Orion 9 <clears throat> mentioned in a book. That's some like sci-fi wrote or, like sci-fi guy wrote, and it's like the computer is called Orion Nine in the book. We're currently not suing him, so um, we're not going to pursue that. Um, <laughs> but no, like you know, Facebook, uh, Twitter, SoundCloud, Hulkster. What else is out Hulkster. there? Spotify. Yeah, it's the shit the kids are on, man. Um, <laughs> it's the new bath salts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, Hang on iTunes. Yeah, iTunes. It's. I mean. Really, honest to God, you go to Google, type in Orion 9, and it's the first, like, three, four pages will be links to something of our stuff that you can find. So. Do you guys have a MySpace? <laughs> what's a MySpace? <laughs> it's there. Yeah. Yeah, you know what's funny? Like, every now and again, every, like, year or so, I'll, I'll like, go on it and log in, and I'm like, what the fuck, dude? People are, like, still sending messages. I'm like, what is this, man? Like, because like, you always want to play a show? I'm like, not if you're hitting me up on MySpace. I don't like <laughs> A little shady now. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like, I am not 12. And what do you guys have for sale that people can find to buy? Uh, our music's up on iTunes. I mean, I it's for free in a million places. So, I mean, if you want to be cool and donate to the band, basically, is the way I look at it, is you can get on iTunes and tons of other downloading sites like Amazon. I think, hell, I think it's on Walmart online, actually. Nice. <laughs> it's in the Walmart online downloading store. Uh, uh, everywhere. Like I said, SoundCloud, though, is going to have, like, all our stuff. Um some of it's for download on SoundCloud. Some of it's not. Uh, Reverb Nation, there's a couple downloads up. Um, YouTube, we got a crap ton of just, like, stupid videos and stuff like that. So, yeah, there's some T-shirts on Facebook. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's all Facebook, really. And you guys have a YouTube channel with videos? Yeah, it's all just stupid stuff. Like, like some of it's posted under the RNG. It's under uh, the Gibby Jenkins oh, channel. Yes, yeah, the Gibby just Jenkins channel. Browse yeah. that, and it's all our stupid like stupid videos. Ryan Nine live and just dumb. Have you ever shot a video? <clears throat> not I have, but not for Ryan Nine. And the reason why we didn't do it for Ryan Nine is just that we're gonna be doing one for this coming stuff that we're just releasing. It was just kind of like waiting for the right time and kind of just the right song. You know, I think guys like just do a video to do a video, and locally that can get kind of generic quickly. So, so it took 12 years for the right song to come along. Yeah. And what yeah. about uh, a DVD? You could take all that footage from tours and shows and maybe this rock or, and roll. Or, or you could just go get on YouTube and get it for free and I don't oh, have to pay Morgan. to make a DVD. You're, just, you're so <laughs> naive, it's cute. Like, well, you guys, you guys can make some flyers and promote your band with some CDs and DVDs and stickers. Like, or they could go on the internet, get it all for free, and tell us to go after ourselves. But you know what? People like you, that's, what they, that's what's missing, though, is the people that go, well, I'd like to get the DVD, or I'd like to get the CD. But the it's problem an is... It's original pressing of an Yeah, it's nine. just people don't... Back in the day, we used to do that. We, we had, like, a little DVD. You know, we've been on other stuff, like paintball DVDs and extreme sports DVDs and stuff like that. But, like, really, in the end, it's just media has changed. It's just so when bands are like, oh, check us out on this, it's like, ah, you just go on YouTube and find it and not really have to. I don't really have to leave my Xbox if I don't want to. Like, I could just sit there and, like, play Call of Duty 3, look up a video, watch a movie, listen to your song, and still kill something. America. <laughs> oh, America. Vote Santorum. Oh, what? Uh, Wiki <laughs> I'm just throwing in, yeah, I'm going to throw in weird random GOP leaks all night. I'm not, I, I can't stay a Republican. Has your everywhere. sound changed from what you started with till now? Yeah. When we originally started, we had keyboards. And it was all like haunted house music. We wore like, we wore like makeup. You was, wore makeup? One show, and uh, we learned our lesson that one show. First time you're sweating, you rub your face, and you just, ah! Your yeah, eyes. my drummer was screaming, man. <laughs> he painted both his eyes like black, and it's just running in his eyes. He's like, Frank, I can't. He's played so fast, just trying to get through the set. So nice. we, we switched that real quick. But we had a lot of influences, too, locally. Like, Soil was a huge influence on us when we were young. 
like from zero. I'll do like you saw all those from guys. zero. I haven't heard them yeah. in yeah. forever. Well, you, those are the bands we'd go watch at the Metro, you know, and like before they got signed, and you just got like cool, you know, you kind of like inspired. whatever happened to from zero. Uh, nothing. <laughs> and, like one They're CD still at died. Zero. Yeah, Arista Records fucked them, or Arista, depending on how you talk about it. I think one of them works as a cement truck driver. Well, there you go. That's what happens. What He's making more there, probably. What do you guys think that your influences are now and you're sounding like now? That's a good question. Uh, WGN radio. Uh, I don't Talk radio? The, yeah, I don't listen to a lot of... 105.9. Yeah, I don't listen to a lot of, like, music. Yeah, I don't know. I listen to a lot of classic rock. I don't know. I listen like, to a lot, a lot of Tool. Yeah, he does. Well, he's a bass player. Yeah. I and mean, it's kind of like, they have to. <laughs> so, I mean, I think it's still, I don't know, it's weird, because it's like, at a point, it's kind of cool, like, I think not to, I mean, I'll still throw in, like, some stuff, like, some Seven Dust, or, like, Deftones, or Pantera, and just kind of like, oh, yeah, it's cool. But primarily, I'm listening to, like, Grassroots, Guess Who, I mean, you know, Steve Miller Band, it's kind of like mellow, chill stuff. Because it's like, when you play metal, and you're around it so much, it's like, it's just, you don't want to hear that all the time. I mean, sometimes it's cool. And you're I like, do. Oh, fuck yeah. oh that's, that's, that's good, man. It's, good. it's very interesting. <laughs> like, it's that's like, not true. Yeah. You what are you talking some, about? You listen to some stuff that's not. Not You'll often. You'll throw on the Misfits or Pennywise or. See, that's still, not by, that's, so that's still kind of in the genre, though, of like yelling. Gigi Allen. Gigi oh, Allen. Oh, yeah. I love me some Hank 3, man. Or Elvis. There you go, I mean, Elvis. Come on. There you go. You gotta. You gotta mix it up a little bit. But That's what I mean, yeah. I love the Beatles. I grew up on the Beatles, Zeppelin, all that stuff. You? No? ACDC. Ah, damn, I hate nice. that band. Nice. Although, we're like, yeah, you know, simplicity is cool. Yeah. Nice. But sound changes and varies because as members come and go, they kind of bring a thing, you know, and they bring their own sound. It's kind of cool because then it, like, evolves you without, you know, you're not just ripping somebody off. And it's a problem. You hear a lot of bands, you're like, oh, yeah, that sounds like this band, or that sounds like that band. And I think if you kind of not listen to that music, you tend not to just subconsciously steal it, yeah. which is kind of what happens. You know, you kind of just start to sound what you listen to because that's what you're trying to mimic. Well, Shit got deep, man. And there you have it. Can't walk in this muck. It's impossible. <laughs> All right, Dave, it's about that time. It's time for the local roundup. Here's what's going on in the next week. And before we start that, we DJed at the exit on Sunday night. And it was sweet. That was fucking awesome. I'm not going to lie. I was freaking out thinking, oh, God, this is going to be a terrible, like, not terrible. I thought it, there were going to be, like, three people there. Yeah. And that place got actually pretty crowded. Yeah. Cool. There, was, there was probably 50 or so people there. And we took a lot For of requests. For a Sunday night. For a Sunday night, it was crazy. Like, We've done I, that. I've definitely cool. been to bars on Sunday nights, and there's usually, like, three well, people not there. by us. They suck, but... Uh, yeah, people, it was, yeah, people out like by you have jobs. The three, the three real <laughs> good yeah. drunks. Yeah, the bar is out by us. Like <laughs> on a Sunday night. Oh yeah. God. Yeah. We should come drinking with you guys then. We have uh, a very lovely town <laughs> with granite countertops. You're all welcome. So uh, yeah, it was a good time. We posted on Facebook uh, the set list that we did. Well, not set list, but the playlist that we had and the requests that we took. So it was pretty awesome. I think in total we had. 36 songs that we played throughout the whole night, which in we did three like hours? three and a half hours worth of music. So uh, it's pretty awesome. So thanks to uh, everybody that came out and uh, Dave. to Rodney for setting it up at the Chicago Metal Factor, Factory. Yeah. And to the, to the bartenders that gave us our free shots. That was, that was pretty awesome, too. So we had a good time and we'll, we'll be back. Maybe uh, we'll make a party out of it for my birthday in February. So. No way. <laughs> I want to party, so fuck you. All right, so here's what's going on. Um, so another hole in the wall is looking for bands to play. And the email, if you... You cracked a smile uh, at that one. What? You have a good another hole in the wall story? No. no. <laughs> great venue, love the place, had a great time. Good job. Yes. All right, so it's... Play Drowning Pool. I'm sorry. Darlene right. at exxonlive.com. You can email if you guys want to play, uh, starting with... September 7th, five bands are needed for a local rock show. Uh, five bands needed for September 8th to play a local metal show. And uh, 
Well, I mean, you know why? You know what? We're going to the Rock and Roll Revival, so you know, you know that's many, why no one's going. You know how many promoters are looking for bands on the eighth? I'm not even trying to be a dick. I've been seeing <laughs> stuff on Facebook. They're like, uh, "Need bands on the eighth? Need bands on the eighth? And I look at Gibby. I'm like, "You know why they can't find any bands? Because all Cause twenty, you got them all. yeah, yeah. All the, every local band's played our goddamn show that day, dude." <laughs> Uh, five bands are needed for September 14th to play with uh, Mobile Death Camp. Mobile. Five bands are needed to play September 23rd with Hollow Drive. And three bands are needed for September 28th to play with Morrow, A Hero of Fake, and Life is a Ghost. Two bands are needed to play with I Declare War at Mojo's on October 2nd. So if you want to play that, uh, get a hold of them on the Facebook page. Sean M. Johnson, the old drummer of Bloodstream Parade, is offering free recording for bands that are looking to do a single or a demo that's four songs or less. He's willing to record and mix your material at his home studio for free if you contact him on Facebook before August 31st. Really? He yes. also makes a killer homemade spaghetti sauce from what I So hear. if you want homemade spaghetti oh, nice. sauce and a free demo... And racial affetats, call Sean. Call and Sean. why is he all of a sudden just... Because he's... A cool guy. He's been trying to get into recording for a while, so he's trying to like get his name out by getting people in there. So. Gotcha. And it makes sense. So, yeah. and Bloodstream Parade was a pretty awesome band when yes, they were they around. Were. So, all right, there's a lot of people looking for drummers. So these are the bands looking for drummers. You guys Choose That's cool. one. After the Spire. Choose one. Strongman. The City of White. Our band of Tomb for 1103. <laughs> and Unsanctioned. And then Armored Assault is looking for a new guitarist. In Hazard is looking for a vocalist and guitarist. Our band of two for 1103 is looking for a guitarist. And uh, Iconicost is looking to book a show for August 27th sometime. A chauffeur. Well, somewhere in the Illinois area. So if you They should get a hold of RNG Productions. We do bookings. Boom. Ooh, here we Plug. go. So can you find this band, Iconicost, a show? Yes, I could. Sweet. <laughs> I could All right. It a challenge. So uh, tomorrow, which is the 22nd at First Midwest Bank, it's Uproar Festival. I wish I was going. It's Candlelight Red, Thousand Foot Crutch, In This Moment, Mindset Evolution, Red Light King, Deuce, Fozzy, P.O.D., Fozzy, Adelita's Way, Papa Roach, Stained, Shine Down, and Godsmack. Holy fucking Papa Roach. What the fuck? <laughs> so we'll keep you Their new song is awesome. I, I like, love I like, Papa Roach. I like the stuff they did, love actually, like when they tried to come back out. I dug what they did. Yeah. I just haven't heard them playing out in a while. They cool. have a new song up. It's been playing on the radio. No. Their new CD gets released it. We don't next get rock month. radio where we come from. <laughs> where do you come one, from? Ninety-five one, rock. You don't get that out in Wheaton. Not in I mean, Wheaton. we not get really. it in Wheaton. It's not really clear. I, I try mean, you have the it. internet. You can search Papa Roach. I'm sure they Boom. have it on their Facebook. Oh, oh. The she type moves it into in. the twenty first. Type it in Google. The internet. <laughs> I'm gonna All say this though. Godsmack is totally running off the youth bands on that. Yeah, yeah, Godsmack last year or two years ago at Upper. Oh my God, no, they I didn't see him on Upper. I saw him at uh, Mayhem, Mayhem last year. and it was unbelievable. They are amazing live. Uh, Thursday, huh. August twenty third at Penny huh. Road Pub, huh. five p.m. Huh. All ages, ten dollars. Uh, for we are only human and Urza and a secret kept are opening for to each his own. City lights, famous last words, and us from outside. Huh? Why? What? Mm. What? Why is the huh? Mm. I was just saying, huh. Ah, okay. Ah. Thursday at the Note venue in Indiana. It's $8 pre-sale, $10 at the door, all ages. Starts at 6 p.m. Uh, resist the Undertow, Verge of Insanity, Home of the Brave, The Burial, As Hell Retreats. And that's going to be their last Indiana show. And a plea for purging. And that's their last Indiana show. Why is it their last Indiana show? Don't ask these questions. I don't have the answers. Warrants. Friday, August 24th at Penny Road Pub. It's probably some money, they say. And it's all ages. It's going to be Strongman, Temporal Salvation, Candace Fox, Subterranean Fishmen, and Breaker Breaker. Friday at Ooh, Reggie's. Subterranean Fishmen. <laughs> 7 p.m., 17 and up, $13. Vortis, Motor City, Speed Metal, and Against the Green. Wait, did you say Mortis? Motor City. Yeah, and Vortis. Oh, Vortis. Vortis. Oh, you said Mortis. I almost was like, oh, I got to go to that. So. Uh, Friday at Bada Brew, 21 and up, 8 p.m. It's Convoy, Redneck Remedy, and huh? Speed Freak. Saturday, August 25th at Bobby McGee's, 8 p.m. Bobby PM. McGee's. Second tribute to the troops. It's the annual one. All proceeds go to the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. And uh, it's going to be Deadlight Redemption, Knife to Gunpoint, Sinister Fate, Catalyst, Bleed for the Fallen and Whiskey Rose. Saturday at Shark City, it's Battle of the F and Rock Series. Go support Legions of Rom. It starts at 7, and it's 21 and up. Saturday at the Fifth Amendment in Indiana, it's 9 p.m. They are need, 
uh, in need of some bands to play the event. So if you're interested, uh, hit up the Fifth Amendment for that. It's Apothecarian, Delirium, Cryptic Oath, Acidic Assault, and Depremacy. On Saturday at Nanchiro's Mexican Restaurant in Round Lake. Nice. <laughs> 3 p.m., all ages, $8, Everything Must Die, The Aristocrats, Lords of the Trident, The Hard-Ons, and yes. Venus Bear Trap. <laughs> yes. We are the Hard-Ons playing at your local Mexican restaurant. They are also playing with Voice <laughs> of Addiction. 21 to drink, 16 to get pregnant. Voice of Addiction, <laughs> Thunder Driver, Felony for Luciferum, Bill, You're a Dick, and Pansig. Bill, You're a Dick? Bill, You're a Dick. And September 7th and 8th, The Rock and Roll Revival. <laughs> And so, one more time. Where was that Mexican restaurant? Round Lake. Oh, fuck that. I've played there, man. You played in a Mexican you, restaurant? I played Round, Round Lake? Lake, man. Okay. Uh, yeah. You ever played in a Mexican restaurant? Uh, with myself. Nice. <laughs> Guacamole is Beneath extra. the table. <laughs> um, <laughs> Dozer <laughs> has a question. He asked, where did the WWE video for Shy Town come from? From them? I don't know. <laughs> like, I mean... We, we got a call from this manager we had, and he was this weird redneck dude from Rehab? Texas. What was his name? Manager guy we had. Oh, I thought you said <laughs> manager rehab. That's like I a Freudian <laughs> slip. Just because I look this way, it doesn't mean anything. So, But no, he calls us, and he's like, hey, man, could you guys be in L.A. on the weekend? And we're like, no, we have no money. And he's like, it's cool. Like, I got it. And we're like, oh, fuck, yeah, okay. <laughs> so, like, a limo picks us up in, like, the biggest snowstorm of the year, and we fly out to L.A., and they put us in the uh, I Love Lucy studio on, like, the NBC lot or something like that. It was really cool. And they filmed it, and we were there for, like, a week in Chinatown getting all fucked up. It was awesome. What? Yeah, it was and really what cool. what is this video? It's, 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 like, stupid as hell, dude. It's, 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 like, this wrestling thing that was on Comcast, and it's, like, we're in the ring, and, like, nobody thought about how the ring moves, and so we're jumping, and, like, the fucking draw, I mean, like, it was insane, dude. We had to do it twice. It was crazy. And... This was all because some guys heard your music. And well, our manager, no, our manager was like, you know, he's doing his job. He's like, hey, man, I got you guys a slot. Like, they need a band. They want to put it on the show. Like, I got you on. So, like, I'm going to fly you out and pay for it. That's, That's pretty sweet. So the whole video is up on your YouTube? <laughs> yeah, it's really stupid. I mean, if you want to have a good laugh, go watch it. It's funny because, I mean, like, the ring's moving, and I'm trying to hold on to the rope and scream, and it's, like, real audio. It's not like they dubbed the song over. It's, like, you know, a live performance. You're watching it's the like, symbols do this. It's really fucking stupid, yeah. It's funny, though. It's crazy we pulled it off. Thank so you. the drum, none, none of the drum set fell over? When no, it was nuts. It should have. Like, I mean, it, dude, at a point, my drummer's just standing up playing. <laughs> like, it's insane. I mean, it's really cool to watch, actually, but it's, it's stupid, too. How long ago did this take place? Uh, I don't know. Carl was back maybe, like, 2010. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. That's how and we roll. And this was WWE? No, it was, no, Dozer was WWE. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was, uh, what was that? Was SummerSlam. Uh, oh, eight. <laughs> it's that one that, like, that, that they, uh, what was that? The w, not WCW, but the one that they started after that with, Nitro. like, Hulk Hogan was running it and, like, Oh, the ECW? Yeah, all right. the wrestlers started running ECW. Yeah, it's like Hulk Hogan ran it, and like a bunch of the old wrestlers started it, and they just wanted guys. I mean, we just got lucky. I mean, that same manager had us do all kinds of other crazy shit. It was cool. So. He had like a slam dunk team on America's Got Talent, too, that guy, the manager. Oh, yeah? yeah. The guys that were on <laughs> the, the trampolines? Guys? That yeah, went, that was, those guys were yeah. awesome. He, he, rep, he repped them. That was his other Like, act. I could not believe what I'm seeing. They were like, like I have Orion 9 dunk. and these eight, <laughs> right, uh, eight right. foot tall black dudes right. that slam dunk. Right, right. It's, it's, you know, it was good for him, though. It, it didn't work out well. Metal and basketball. The company picnic was weird. Like, so. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys, uh, you guys played basketball, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, so. So, yeah, it was good. But that's what Dozer's talking about. Oh, Dozer also wanted us to push. It's like he's here. Um, he wanted us to push the, uh, the um, was that the Urban Grind TV? Yes, the Ur Urban Grind from TV. Comcast that's coming out to the party. We're going to push that Channel again. Channel 25. Yeah, check your local Comcast. listings on twice a week. So I guess they're going to come out and do like a whole thing, which would be kind of cool. So um, I'm sure they'll be used in court against us. So um, Exhibit nice. A. Right. Exhibit, Exhibit A. a. <laughs> Note them taking hallucinogenics. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a lie. You can't prove that. Nice. They can't. I also wanted to know why she wasn't playing the uh, revival. What? <laughs> Something about your band and not playing the revival? Because we we're don't not have ready. a full band. <laughs> <laughs> nah. We're missing a guitarist and we're missing and a, a drummer. drummer. I've heard that story before. And we are so still why? recording. Well, that's good. We, we, have like, we only have like three guys. songs. We're like, all right, we have three songs. All right, thank you. Well, that's all right. 
So once we maybe get like, like six, I, you I pull six. I could you could pull six. We I think once that. we get like six, six yeah. or seven down, then we're gonna start. Uh, Go even if we have kid. to do like a drum machine, you know, just through the Honestly, PA you're or something. Honestly, better, man. You don't have to deal with their bitching and shit then. And you don't have to move all their shit. Yeah, man. dude. Oh god. So I think once we have more of a more songs under our belt, then we're gonna probably mm-hmm. just start playing regardless if we find That's more why people or not. We've been hit up to play so many shows that I've had to be like, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. It sucks right now. But I mean, That's honestly, we, we've only practiced like twice together and then we just started recording. And then for some reason, we're just like, all right, I guess we're recording now. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we've good. never like started a band from scratch. So we kind of are missing. It's, yeah, it's very weird. I've way. always just joined a band. Yeah. It's like, oh, you steps. need a vocalist. All right. I could do vocals. Sweet. And yeah. then I'm in the vocal. Now we're just like, oh, we don't need practice. Let's just uh, record this and see how it sounds. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Oh, That's very okay. weird. Very weird process. Just starting up a band as opposed to joining yeah. a band. I guess. Yeah. I mean, for me, I don't, I don't yeah. know. I don't know either. I, I've only been in one band, so I don't know. Oh, well, there it's you like, have it. You like, fuck. It's like hell. <laughs> One band. It won't to end. Rule them all. <laughs> yeah. There can be only one. He's playing horror last year. Yeah, slut. It was bad. It was three bands last year. He Jeez. was. Oh, and God. he'd come in smelling like them. Oh, it was bad. <laughs> you cheat. He, he was always afraid. He's like, I, I, he patiently waited for me to start playing a song from one of the other bands. Yeah, I kept waiting. I'm like, he's going to fuck up and start oh, playing God. another song. He'd come in with their beer on them. No, that'd be Kip. <laughs> oh, yeah. Our drummer does that. It's cool. It's part of the show. He fucks up, I spank him on stage. Nice. <laughs> if you ever see that, that is part of the show. We didn't just actually fuck up. <laughs> All right, well, we're winding down for the night. We're going to go out hearing yeah. your last song. This right. deep song is called what? Uh, are we doing one or two? It's well, do two. Cause if we're, yeah, because I want to do Kiss yeah, the two. Sun, because that's like the girly foo-foo song. We want to get that okay. one out there. And boom, boom. And boom, boom. We'll end the night boom, with boom, boom. Boom, boom. boom. I'll go out to Randy if he's out there. Randy. All right, here we go. Wendy. And thank you guys so much for coming out. Definitely for check out us. the Rock and Roll Revival. Yeah. September 7th and 8th. Orion 9. Yeah. We're going to be there. SoundCloud, and Facebook, download everything. Take it, spread it, share it, steal it, do whatever. And the torrent link will be up soon. Yeah, actually, the torrent link for the, for the <laughs> album that's currently for sale. So. Oh, shit. And good night. All right. <laughs> Tears to my lips, a 